probably can't see very well, but it's about 10 o'clock at night and I just spent 11 hours on the train and I'm now in Buffalo, New York. So it's been a long day on my end, but I am in Buffalo for a very special reason. Tomorrow I am going to meet um, an, an old friend of my grandfather's who uh, went through the Second World War with, with my grandpa. I'm the one who had to write and tell him that my grandpa died uh, last May. So ever since around Christmas when he first started writing, we've sort of been pen pals. Um, so yeah. So we are in Buffalo in the daytime. It's a fun night last night. There's a baseball stadium baseball stadium over that way and uh, I guess they won last night because they were shooting off fireworks. I don't know if that's a normal thing or not but around like 10 o'clock at night you see all these red and white fireworks which are their team colors so I'm assuming that means that they won their game which is good I guess. Flags we are right by the Canadian border so you're gonna see a lot of uh, Canadian flags. So right now I'm going to get some breakfast and then slowly making my way north, like I know what I'm doing. Alright, I'm getting pretty close now. This is a cute little downtown. I kind of like this. And check out this old rail bridge up here. That is cool. This is fantastic though, look at this thing. This is straight out of maybe the 1920s or something. Maybe earlier, maybe a little later, but you don't see these at home. up there of looks like a carousel horse or something. Yeah man check that out. Back of the carousel horse. You must have a thing for carousel horses around here. There's another one up there on that light post. See there's another carousel horse. Man, there must be a lot of important Edwards around here. This is the second Edward Street I've found. The first one was actually back in in the city in Buffalo. I was looking for a florist and failed. We had bed check Charlie every night. That's when the Germans would come over and bomb us. We weren't even off the boat yet. We weren't set up to do anything yet. We, first couple of days till we got organized. Some of the anti-aircraft moved to St. Lowe and but they still got bombed there. Yeah, we kept moving after that. It was one town after the other. I don't remember Places where we slept, even. I know I slept under my truck most of the time. The only thing I remembered was St. Low. That was terrible. There's nothing left in that town. A couple of churches was all that's left. I, that amazed me, is why churches and stuff that stood and other buildings got bombed. I remember when they bombed St. Low, them planes could eight solid hours one plane right after the other. We had loaders, we had trackers. I was a tracker. I was a f big truck, two and a half ton. Brand new. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I was in good shape. I don't know. I tell you, it was cold, and especially in the winter time. Like I said, the Battle of the Bulge, it was snows, probably was three feet deep. It was bad weather. Picture that one where Charlie was with the plane, that's when they were firing at ground troops. Charlie got a, got to go for a ride in that one plane. But the pilot just took him, I guess. In fact, I brought a rifle home. I did bring it home. I, yeah, I brought it as far as getting on the boat, and then I gave it to Charlie, because I didn't want it. I gave it to Charlie, and Charlie sold it. At the Battle of the Bulge, that's where that Sergeant Kirby got hurt. That was shrapnel that he got hit with. I took him to the medics. I don't know whatever. He was from Long Island. Shrapnel from 
shells dropping. The bombs were bombing us. And they come in from a repo depot. They used to call them repo depots. We needed a, a guy or something. Well, that's we got them. There was a kid from New York that left our outfit, went to the paratroopers. I picked him up in, fr in France after he got shot in a, in a jump. And the snipers got him. He was in a cast all the way down his leg. Tom McHugh, we knew where he was, so a couple of us went to see him. And he was in a field hospital, and we took him out and had a few drinks. But I don't know whatever, whatever happened to him. They were building the bridge when we crossed it, a pontoon bridge, one of floating bridges. Yeah, and then we had to wait for that. And, you know, it's the only way we could get my truck and gun across. But the infantry complained we were there with a truck make a noise. We were at a railway station and a guy was getting his hair cut and we got shelled. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was funny. Just one of our guys cutting somebody's hair. He took you a know. dive, whatever. It was in Gotha. That one where they had, we got that picture. It was outside mm -hmm. of the camp. It wasn't really in it. Well, you remember when you at that concentration camp, you could smell the dead bodies. It, where the pictures were taken, you could smell it. Just like rotten meat. Peanut, I don't know, I just picked him up somewhere and he stayed with me. It's like a, uh, what do you call these terriers? Yeah, that's what he was. He didn't need no training. All he needed was something to eat. He was, I kept him for quite a while. I, I don't know what I named him Peanut for, but that's what he was, Peanut. We were sitting under, it was a railway station there, and we were sitting there, me and another fellow, and this guy comes up and saluted him. He knew he was an officer. We didn't know who he was at first. He says, how are you guys doing? And I asked us a lot of questions, and I said, well, we're a bunch of bitchers. He says, I like bitchers. He says, they make good soldiers. <laughs> yeah, this IADs yeah. shot that kid. The bullet went from here, out here. Accident, but, and you know, when we came back into that town, that little boy, his arm stunk so bad. Cleared him up and he was in good shape. Yeah, I think the army hospital took care of him. Uh, I can't think of the name of the town right now. Patton ran out of gas for his tanks. That's why they sent me and all the trucks they could to get gas. And they said, Andy, for my driver. Yeah, they took trucks from all different outfits and sent us back to Sherbrooke to get gas. That was Thanksgiving time. That's why you saw the picture of the turkey. They were already cooked. They gave you canned hash. I'd put it on the manifold of the truck and it'd be warm when you got ready to eat. Like I said, it's edible. The sea rations were in a box. But there was a bar of chocolate, bitter chocolate. That's probably why Eddie didn't like it. <laughs> they had good food, they had bad food. What are you gonna do when they're cooking for a couple hundred people a day or thousands a day? They were powdered eggs, but I think Luxembourg. I had ice cream, somebody gave it to me. Well, it was more or less a neutral country. They were all pretty nice people. I mean, the people in France treated us good whenever we went through a town. What did they do? Did, did they? Uh... Yeah, they were out there shouting at us. and They didn't have much to give, but they were good. I don't think we had any trouble with any of them. They were pretty nice people. I went and got some eggs from them. I happened to go to that farm and ask them for some eggs. And the girl's mother, was she was sort of bitter, but I can't blame her. The father did, but the girl wouldn't, didn't want them. But yeah, we took our share, as Charlie and I did. I don't know how it even happened. I think they, more of us gave up to us. Somewhere in France, we got them. There were probably stragglers left over. They were ready to quit. There was always some prankster doing something, putting matches in your shoes and lighting them and giving you hot feet. There's guys that used to do that. You were sleeping. Nah, one match wouldn't kill you. Somebody, it would be anybody that came along. 
No, like I said, I never had too much trouble, never caused any trouble. We were all just there to do our job, I guess. We were at a, a railway station, I think it was, and we had draft beer. We had draft beer on draft, and we drank, could only drink at certain hours, but we had it. I would just wanted to get home, but we got sent to Scotland. We had enough points to come home, all of us did. But they sent us to Scotland to ship these guys home that were going on emergency leaves. Then they wanted us to ship us to Pacific, but we didn't go. We were on a ship that used to travel from New York to Florida and Cuba. And coming home was the same way. Some guys came home. I think Eddie came home on the Champlain. I'm pretty sure he did because some of the guys came home on the Champlain and some mm -hmm. of us came home on the, another one of those small ships. And some of us had to sleep on the outside. Well, the one guy, Christy, he brought a boxer home from Germany. When I got discharged, it was November. I couldn't even get a drink. It was election day. I got out of New, in New Jersey, Fort Dix. No, I just didn't stop till I got to Buffalo. Me and a guy from Buffalo came to Buffalo together. Mm -hmm.